Hey guys, Clums here. Welcome back to Clumsy Flying. How's everyone doing? Sorry, we're a bit late again today. I'm a bit shiny. Hmm, maybe too much light. Ah, uh, that will fix itself later. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining. Hope you can hear me well. The eight minute intro. <laughs> Six minutes. Six minutes. How are you guys? Thanks for joining Adventure. Welcome back. Gamaste, how have you been? Glad you're not the bus driving. How is your what is your opinion on the bus? Getting mixed mixed reactions there from opposite ends of the camp. Let's maybe lessen that a bit like so. There we go. A gentler light. How are you, Tom? Thanks for joining, Patrick. Fancy seeing you here as well. How's everyone? <clears throat> hey Bow Wow. That's why I'm always late on the chat. Indeed. Indeed. So today we are flying the CRJ. We are working hard on the VA. Finally making money. For the longest time I have been a slacker in the VA. I was the poster boy of our virtual airline. No longer. I'm starting to earn money now, finally. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll try to continue with that. I'll show more details as we go. Hey, super! Glad you made it larger! Welcome back, guys. Bunky, how are you? Thanks for that amazing spreadsheet. So we've been trying to organize our VA guys, our virtual airline. And uh, yeah, Bunky has been a huge part of that. He's the one who makes all the spreadsheets and stuff. Makes things organized, so we're just not fumbling about. <clears throat> the job generation changes. Passenger-wise, I'm not a fan. The FBO definitely liking it. I made um, a feature suggestion on how the passenger system can be improved, but I'm not sure if that will be. I think it's a lot of work. It's very different from what they're doing right now. <clears throat> and about your request, Tom, uh, I think we'll need some points there. And anyway, um, just take note, guys. If you have a request for a flight, I probably can't do it on the spot, you know, like on the stream itself. Because before the stream, I do some preps already, like where we're going, is this feasible? So I do some planning before the stream. So even if you request something now, the earliest it can be done is next stream. Yeah, so might as well. You can earn some points and then request it, Tom. <laughs> that can work. And so I can plan for it as well in advance. <clears throat> You like the bus from the videos? Nice. One-to-one -one scale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess they chose Berlin since they know about it more. Good job with the seats. Much more interesting. Yeah, the economy, business, and uh, maybe let's show it. So here's on air. Let me show you what I've been doing. I have 700k in the bank now, personal money. Uh, that's the one where did it start so it started 20th of March when was that over the weekend I was flying yeah exactly Saturday and it was like doing two flights per day yeah two flights per day and then yesterday I was only able to do one so all in all how many is that one two three four five six seven flights with the CRJ 700 for the airline and I'm uh, earning money for us bit by bit not a huge deal, but I'm loving the experience. And uh, today, we are going to do one more job. Oh, did we get an additional FBO? I think previously we only had 50. Nice. <clears throat> so today, we are going to take this job from Colorado Springs, downtown Snake of the Woods. This guy. Going to Cincinnati today. There you go. That's the one. 13,923 uh, pounds of cargoes, no passengers today. And uh, it's going to be, where is it? 945 nautical miles. Is that the one? Should be. There we go. Yes, that's the one assigned to me. Got a new FBO in Athens. Awesome, Monkey. Awesome. Expanding the EMEA network. <clears throat> the EMEA term is very corporate. <laughs> I can definitely relate. Alright, so let's go and plan this thing. How do we do this? So in this 
stream, I'd want to show the end-to-end -end things, my workflow of how I do this, just in case anyone would be interested in following similarly. So I can point them to different timestamps. I do have a lot of different apps as well. And uh, for today, we'll be utilizing Pilot to ATC. So we have uh, air traffic control coverage the entire time. We'll see how that works. <clears throat> I was thinking of getting into VATSIM, but um, I don't, don't think I'm proficient enough with the plane for that. And it's not going to contribute so much to the stream experience. So I think what I'll do instead is I'll do an offline uh, recording of a VATSIM flight and put that in YouTube. But I think for the stream, it will be better so I can interact better if it's pilot to ATC. Uh, is that excuse, uh, does that excuse fly? <laughs> I, when it comes to VATSIM, I'm always filled with excuses. Okay, let's go and take this. So what I do... This is the one that's assigned to us. Aerosoft CRJ 700 ER, November 420 uniform alpha tail number. Currently at Colorado Springs. Let's take that in. How have you guys been doing? What have you been busy with? 140 update. So we can see here the almost 14,000 pounds of cargo once we tick that. Then we'll see the gross weight update. So it's a matter of payload, the cargo, the fuel, and crew, two members of the crew, just the pilot and co-pilot, no uh, flight attendants, because it would be quite weird having flight attendants for cargo, <laughs> cargo loads. <laughs> yeah, CRJ, indeed. So how do we do this? First things first is I would go to SimBrief. And uh, let me put in this window. So later we'll go there. So Simbri first. New flight. We are going from... When it comes to airliners, I really like using Simbri because it has all the proper fuel planning and the, the uh, cruising altitude and all the weights and balances. So it's more, much more intricate than Little Nav Map. I think Little Nav Map is perfect for GA. But for airliners, I would prefer SimBrief for our flight planning. So Colorado Springs to Cincinnati Municipal, I think something like that. Then we'll pick the CRJ700. I found a CRJ700 for Aerosoft aligned with their specs in the Aerosoft forums. And then you can save that in your own profile here in SimBrief, so it's more honest to one. So what I do is I go to this area i get the zero fuel weight from here so that's gross weight minus the fuel right because that's everything except the fuel so that's 63176 minus um, 3873 so that's 59303 59 point 3 thousand 59300 pounds zero fuel weight so what I'll do is I'll put that here, zero fuel weight, 59.3. There you go. And then I'll check what the route it has for us. That looks good. And uh, we'll generate it. And then in the flight plan will tell us how much fuel we need. And then that's the fuel I'll plug in to on air. The free helicopter, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I've been asking Alex a lot of questions about it. <clears throat> because he knows more about helicopters than I do. I've never tried flying one in the sim, in any sim. So it's going to be exciting. But I'm also waiting for that helicopter to be a bit more polished. But we'll see. We'll see. For sure, we'll get into it once the helicopters start coming out because it seems like from the looks of it it seems like a very interesting thing to fly always filled with excitement so that's the basic stuff block fuel 12951 so we can lock it at 13k so i can go back to on air here and put in fuel now i don't use this all because if you use the all it puts something in the center tank and normally i imagine like all airliners the left and right uh, fuel tanks get prioritized and when those are full that's the only time the center tank gets filled some with something 
So instead, I do this manually. So let's max that out. We also have a, so this is displayed in gallons, but here on the right side, you can actually see that's pounds, 15,000 pounds. So that's a bit too much. So I'll load it only up to 13,000, let's say 90% maybe. So that's 13.55, so it's still a bit much. I'm just eyeballing it right now. 13.1, there you go, 87%. I think that works. Yes. So uh, here we have, yes, our FBO. So we get some cheaper fuel. I confirm that so that it gets loaded. And while that's working, so you can see the icon there that it's getting loaded. I'll go to our FBO and buy some fuel. Because when you take fuel, refill it. It's like a good habit to have. <clears throat> and then we can close this window. So let's go to... Uh, let's sort by IKEA code here. Colorado Springs, that's the one. Just order some fuel in here. There you go. I am enjoying the management side of things here. Especially with our VA managers mostly taking care of stuff. I'm just like sometimes here, oftentimes not. There you go. That's being ordered. Looking good. You can close that window and get back here. In here. And look, guys, I'm almost at 200 hours. I, mean, I think I'm at 199 point something. So today's stream, hopefully we reach that 200 mark. Huge milestone for me. Yeah, 199 and 27 minutes. <laughs> almost there. Almost there. <clears throat> hey, new fee. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Fuel up. Fuel up all the way. Colorado Springs. Maybe we'll see downtown here. He says he lives right beside, or not right beside, but right by runway 35, right like this one. So his house is maybe somewhere here in real life. Super cool. Now, in terms of runway, I didn't really see what it's planning for us. Uh, 35 three, right. Yeah, there we go. 35 right. We can do that. But what I also want to do is feed this into pilot to ATC right here. So yes, so many different things. So what I do is I copy that, that routing from pilot to ATC from Simbrief and paste that here. It's not perfect because pilot to ATC has different recommendations on runways at times and different um, uh, SIDs and stars assignments. But for the most part, it looks good. So flight level 370 for us. <clears throat> the 787 is the thirsty bird. Oh goodness. <laughs> How much fuel did you consume? Streamline checklist. Yes, larger. Uh, I'll show that later. It's something I always use. <clears throat> Thanks, Tom. Yes, I have the link as well. Hey Jack, thanks for joining. How was the hunting? Thanks for the raid, BitBoy. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Perfect timing. We are just starting up. How are you guys? <laughs> Utilizing pilot to ATC today. Let me see if I can remember. Maybe let's load up first here. So if we're going to use uh, 3 5 right, yes. Yeah, so let's maybe park somewhere here. There's a gate somewhere there. There you go, like a small gate, that's perfect. Lifetime is 6.20 p.m. It's maybe put that back around 5 hours. So minus 5, so we fly at around 1.20 p.m. starting off. So we have perfect daytime. Or we can start off maybe 3 p.m. Yeah, let's make it minus 3. So, there's, so we have a bit of like setting sun in the background. Okay, let me just double check some stuff. Weight and balance all on the right. CG position all the way to the right as they recommended, as Airsoft recommends. That should be good. Let's load it up. Let me turn off preview here. There we go. <clears throat> good morning, good evening. Bitboy Ray, there we go, indeed. You were having fun. What were you streaming, Bitboy? Hey, G. That's great to hear, man. Rest well, hope you are doing fine. 
Simbrief always gives you much more block fuel because of the alternate, yeah, and I would say that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm more of a safe kind of guy. <laughs> no worries, Tom. You're almost at 300 hours. Yeah, same here. I was flying for a huge amount of time with dev mode on and I didn't know that that disabled the log. So, not turning dev mode on again as much as I can. Blue line, how far you're gonna fly? Yes, it's going to be around 900 miles, was it? <clears throat> awesome, guys. Thanks for joining. 3 p.m., how far east you go? Oh yeah, that's that's a good point. Transition. All right, so let's load up here. Things are loading up, and yes, we are. We st Do you guys encounter that bug in FS twenty twenty? That bug that they haven't fixed yet. Fixed yet? Oh, there we go. I think we disable the track IR for now, so it's easier. There's the plane. Beautiful. Now, as we're loaded up here. We can connect to the sim. And let me know if you hear the voice as okay. That sounded scary. Let's think of, think of a number, flight number. Clumsy 179er. I don't know, just a random number. Okay, so let's uh, validate that and file it. And then what will happen is they'll give us a um, proper... SIDs and stars, runway assignments and stuff like that. Okay, now it looks like this is going to be pretty straightforward. No SID, no star, just an approach. Okay, we can work with that. So I'll put that back here. Maybe. Good. And then in on air, so this is my personal screen now. So me the one I mentioned a while ago where we say the minus 3 or minus 5 so it's 6 p.m. right now but I want to be flying at around 3 p.m. so I set here the offset to minus 3 because it will use the real time by default but if you adjust that then you can have an offset right so look at this one let's see if everything is fine okay everything has been loaded we have at 87 percent fuel now the cargo has been loaded up we can fly yeah, Pilot ATC uses current AIRAC, so it gets updated with Navigraph if you have a subscription. So, Kilo, Lima, Uniform, Kilo, Cincinnati Municipal Airport, Lunken. Sounds European, doesn't it? Okay, good. And Gilbert Crouch is our co-pilot today. This guy is not the best. He's uh, lazy. He's late. <laughs> But since all he's, he'll be doing is sitting at my right side, not doing anything literally, I I just pick the cheapest guy as an employee, the cheapest um, salary, and I just take him wherever I go. Because in on air, depending on the plane you fly, you would need a co-pilot. Right, so let's go to the flight tracking page. <clears throat> yeah, the basic sim ADC pretty lacking at the moment unfortunately all right so now we go go to the nice part for those of you who are not familiar with it yet we do have a mods list that's what the exclamation point mods command does and if you're watching this on youtube that's the mods list link in the video description <clears throat> if this is the footage you're watching so this is how it looks if you click on that link and here you have all the mods I'm using with their respective links and everything. But what I'm using right now is the CRJ-700, this one. So I have a checklist that I made. Something that is a bit more practical for my style. So I use that in every flight. Um, you can check that out and see if it works for you as well. I'll load it up in a bit. But in addition, you'll notice later that I have a lot of custom cameras. I actually have nine custom cameras set up. And if you want to try those out for yourself, you can download it in this from this link, the Google Drive, and you can place it in that directory. So the mods list link is uh, the mods list is very powerful for those things if you're looking to use it that way. So that's the checklist. I tried to modify it. 
we have a link to the video that I made for the cold and dark start for a bit of guidance if some of these don't make sense. But yeah, I, I use this in every flight because I tend to forget a lot of uh, things. Some of them I can remember already, but uh, not everything. It's perfect for the co-pilot job. <laughs> perfect name, right? Yeah, he's cheap, exactly what we need. Okay, EFB. Let's go and place the chocks. And those are placed already. Call the GPU, the ground power cart, and open all the doors. See that reflecting outside? There we go. All the doors opening. I was going to say FPS is actually pretty decent right now, but yeah, when you hit the bug, sure not sure if you guys who are playing get it as well. You get that we are like 5 to 10 FPS locked for a couple of seconds, minutes. It's pretty much a hassle. Hey, Olaf. Yeah, I, that's why I don't use the built-in ATC. It's a bit buggy right now. I highly recommend Pilot to ATC, although it is pricey. But I have been using Pilot to ATC since the X-Plane 11 days. And uh, I don't have regrets. I've moved over to Flight Sim 2020 and I can still use it. So it's multi-sim support. It's very nice. Okay, there we go. That's set up. So these are the custom views I have. Let me go, go through them. So we have the EFB, we have the FMS programming, we have the overhead panel, we have the uh, autopilot panel, the flight control panel, I think FCP. We have um, the pedestal for the buttons here. We have this view, so you can change the different, um, what do you call this, ECAS uh, messages over here. So you click here something and it updates that part there. You have this one on the co-pilot side, you have the pilot side, and then you have, you have a cinematic like uh, overview look. So these custom views, if you want them to, tr to try them out, you can download the file from the mods list. Okay, but anyway, start the battery. You see that the, the GPU is available, so let's turn that on. Turn on the nav lights to indicate that we have GPU connected. Hydraulic 3A is going on, and we can go and get the lights on here a bit more ambiance going here we start tuning the irs go that nav mode and put the lights on as well Something to do with some floodlights i think seems worth the money yeah definitely i'll try it out in a bit thanks guys for joining welcome to the stream let's acknowledge the warnings so from here, when I get lost, when I, mm, what's the next step? Then I look at my checklist. Um, okay, I have the IRS nav, ground services. Oh, we can call it ground services. Let's role play this. So we can tune in to ground. Oh, I don't have Navigraph. One second, guys. I forgot some steps. I also want to set up Sim Toolkit Pro because that would give you that, uh, you see that bar at the top of the screen? That should actually have something. So... Let me do something here. Give me a few seconds. Uh, CRJ. Okay. Offline, fly now. Start work. Connect. Is it updating? Hopefully. Okay, you should see something on the top of the screen now. Face unknown. Okay, that seems scary. <laughs> 2 hours 42. Okay, we might need to do a bit of sim rate increase there later on, but let's worry about that later. This is nice though, huh? So this is how a Sim Toolkit Pro looks. It can load the flight plan from SimBrief directly. And here we have the information on the airports. Very nice, actually, and you have the full uh, rational flight plan here. The charts, I think I'll still use Navigraph, but this is a handy tool. I like it. Okay. <clears throat> so what next? Up next is we program the flight plan. The flight manager system, the FMS was in it. 
Let's go and put in our current airport here. Colorado Springs, Kilo Charlie, Oscar, Sierra. Get the coordinates from the GPS here, paste that there. And then let's plug that in again. Going to Kilo Lima Uniform Kilo. 945 nautical miles, good. Now we'll be departing from runway 35 right, that's this guy. No SID, so that's okay. And then in terms of routing, so 35 right and then from there we go direct to Quail, Quebec Uniform as Alpha India Lima, direct to Papa Whiskey Echo. I like this. I like this part. Some people don't and it's a matter of taste. Some people just want to load stuff from Simbrief directly. But I really like building the habit of getting familiar with each of the waypoints that I'm going to go through. So that when I go to VATSIM or other online networks for example, when they ask me to go somewhere, it kind of makes sense to me. And then the arrival would be at... Uh, uh, now nav it's, pilot to ATC gave me a different airport runway 03 oh so it's going to be an RNAV approach I haven't tried an RNAV approach with this plane yet that might be interesting huh interesting okay we'll see how that works and then execute okay looking good we'll see how that looks let's go to plan mode here and check how the the different legs are like one second, huh? Vectors. Uh, okay. So if we go to MFD Advance here, we can check each waypoint. If it makes sense, if it doesn't jump to the other side of the world. So we have a discontinuity here from the last VOR that we're going. And then we get vectors and then we jump into the, the final. Hmm. Does it make sense? Is it too far? Not really. Kind of. We'll see. We'll see what Pilot to ATC plans for us, but we'll adjust as necessary. This will test the skills of Pilot to ATC because they can give you vectors. So they can tell you when you're close to approach, they can give you heading to so that you line up on the runway perfectly. So far, it's been working well for me. But as always in the stream, it's not always a fixed thing, so we'll see get some lights in there as well okay looking good let's continue with that <clears throat> hey Yusuf how are you pilot to ATC how it is handling ATC uh, what do you mean larger <clears throat> I can sure I can for sure show some more pilot to ATC stuff <clears throat> okay so that looks good let's go to perf in it will be Cruising at flight level 370 today. Good. And in terms of weights, uh, okay, yes. So if we look at the checklist, the streamline checklist, this is when we go into the EFB. But before we do that, we actually, this is the time we go to on air because we haven't really started the on air flight yet. So the on air item is in there. This is when we start the flight. You can see the time of the day changed, right, outside. So, okay, so that's tracking. And the first step before you do anything here is to init fuel from the aircraft because right now it's only detecting 9,800 here in the AFB, but we actually loaded, if you guys remember, 13,000 pounds, right? So we init fuel from the aircraft. And there you go. Now you see the proper reflected weights from on air. So from there, we will put in the zero fuel weight that we have planned, which is, let me see, let me see. Uh, same brief is saying 59,300 okay so what we can do is we can adjust this uh, for example that's something like this 59,300 I don't use the zero fuel weight here anymore because it's um, it leads to wrong center of gravity you always go outside of those bounds and uh, it doesn't seem right. So I stick here and just manually tune it. 59,300. Okay, that looks good. 
Alright. 59,000. Actually, no. That's pretty far away. <clears throat> so, something like that, maybe. 59,300. So, from there, I'm not sure why. Don't ask me. Uh, but you set the payload in simulator twice. The first time you do this, you see the center of gravity go all the way outside. The second time, it goes a bit more inside. Now, that's still, I think, outside. The I don't really know how to read this, but I think it should be inside. So I think we can tweak that more just a bit. Um, so if we lessen this one and we increase the passengers, I think that will work. Lessen the cargo and increase the passengers. Just so we're inside. 59,300. And then set the payload again. There we go. Now we're inside. Good. So let's keep that. That looks good. So we copy perf init data to FMS. And that will copy all those numbers into the FMS there. And then we also, because we're here already, set the V speeds. Uh, that doesn't look right. Why does it... Why do we have why don't we have anything in there? That's the first time I've seen that. Interesting. Hmm. Are we going over something? You guys noticed why that's not why that number's not there? Whoops. I have no idea. <clears throat> uh that might be problematic, guys. Let's see, flaps, eight flaps. I have no clue. Well, that's not the best time to be fiddling out on us, actually. <laughs> Adjusting the payload cargoes in packs, yes. I found that that's more reliable instead of just changing the zero fuel weight, which always leads to out of center of gravity. Hey, Doobie, great to hear, man. Thank you. <clears throat> so, any ideas on how we can fix the takeoff speeds here? Did I miss anything in my checklist? No, it should be good. What could I have been missing? Let's see. Let's uh, let's explore something. If we set this just uh, something like that, I'm trying to see if I can get back the V speed somehow. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I don't think it works. Okay, let's get that back here. I mean, let's make that full passengers. And uh, so right now it's not the most realistic because in on air we didn't really have passengers, right? But here we have to have something because it, you can't set it up to be full cargo. It's not set up that way, but that's okay. We can make it work. 59.3 Now if I remember some of the V speeds we can just do that There you go, that works great. Okay, but yeah, it doesn't seem like that works. So we'll have to manually set that up later You know what? I'll just set here like 200 I mean we have enough runway So even though it won't be accurate We can at least Make sure that it's enough speed to take us airborne. Contingency. Okay, looking good there. Performance in it, the cruise. I put a copy from the average wind from Sembrief. 224 at 41 knots. I don't think I'm not sure how much change this actually does in the actual flight plan. So it, for me I just put that in for the sake of correctness. Uh, performance wise. Now, one second. Um, perf, init, VNAV setup. Uh, the climb I change as well. Because I want a 0.77 climb. I'll explain that more in more detail later. Something I've um, learned as I fly this plane. There you go. Awesome. Rotate at 142. Ah, thanks, Gunny. AAE. How are you guys doing? Thanks for joining the stream. 
So how do we do that? Speed refs. Uh, so V1, 143 was it? 142, okay, 142. Thanks, glad you remembered it. Not touch the sim weights, yeah, don't touch the sim weights. You only tweak this, the, the weights from here. The way you synchronize that is when you press this set payload in sim, that sets whatever you put here into the sim itself, into the plane. So, But don't go here anymore. Otherwise, it will override. So just stay here. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's go to camera 8 here. So 142. And then VR would be 142 as well. Any idea what V2 is? Should be higher. Let's maybe just place it at 152. I have no idea. <clears throat> Hopefully, we wouldn't need it because we wouldn't have any engine failure. So you won't need our V2 speeds. There you go. That looks good. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> good. Hey, t -pick. Uh, I think I read that wrong. The epic gamer should be. <laughs> You're on VATSIM controlling ground at New Orleans. Oh, nice. Wow. Awesome stuff, man. I hope to fly the CRJ soon in VATSIM when I'm proficient enough. But uh, right now, I don't think I'm at that level yet. You'll see it later as I fumble around, especially during takeoff and when, all, when the workload comes up. How are things? Have you seen people flying CRJs in Flight Sim 2020 in VATSIM? How are they behaving? Okay, looking good there. So performance would be at uh, flex temp 46. I think this is more of an approximation. Not really an accurate number, but should be good enough. Okay, so from here, we set all the hydraulics to auto, all the other ones. And the cabin pressure, oh, I hate this. This is the one I, I really hate when I'm going to, when I'm here in Colorado Springs. Because the airport elevation is super high and you have to tune that up way way up i think it's what 6300 you've seen a massive increase in crjs oh nice how are they behaving are they able to like they're not fumbling around <laughs> lots of guys who are very quick on the uptake you can also adjust the winds by checking the average deviation from the top of the sim brief top of the sim brief briefing Ah, yes, that's the one I put in, I think. Average winds and the deviation from the first page. That is for landing out, but for some reason, even for takeoff, they set this for the airport, the departing airport. I guess that's to know the... the I'm not sure, actually. Maybe that's the pressure that they need. So we're sure that the cabin pressurizes at the correct rate. So it is part of the official checklist to set this during departure. Even though for most of the airports, uh, for most of the other planes, they don't have it this way. They only, like in the Airbus, right? You only set this during landing. Actually, you don't even set this in the Airbus. It's automatic. In the 737, you set it only on landing. But for the CRJ, you set it during takeoff and landing. Don't ask me why. 6-2 should be a good enough range. There you go. Okay, looking good there. And then we put the windshield heat to low. And we put the passenger signs, no smoking. Seatbelt signs can go on as we finish refueling. And emergency lights to arm. Good. <clears throat> From there, then we can go to our pedestal to engage the stab trim, the MAC trim. And because the IRS has been aligned, by indication of that PFD having that nice horizon, then we can also engage the yaw damper. There you go. Looking good there. Up next, uh, we can actually close the doors now. We can assume that everyone has come on board already. We'll get the announcement from the flight attendant. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. And we can start the APU. So we crew, aboard this hit these we buttons, open the flap, Before and start it up. We monitor the situation in here. 
Tapito, yes, the probe heats will enable once we start the engine. Uh, I actually asked about that from real uh, CRJ pilots. Apparently, there's because I was wondering why the Pito heat doesn't have. Um, it's not a warning anymore here. Like it, you don't get a warning if the probe heats are off. And apparently, there's an automatic system that enables it, like halfway and, and on the ground, and then when you take off, it goes full, something along those lines. But it is not that essential, I think. But I, I still put it in the checklist, so it's it's accurate. Yeah, super high up, 6,180 feet. <laughs> so our our takeoff uh, performance is uh, hugely impacted, I can imagine. There we go. APU is available. Perfect. You can start the air conditioning with the recirculating or circulation fan. And now we can get rid of the ground power cart and the wheel chocks as well. Awesome. Now I'm using another app here. Um, where is it? If I can find it. Pushback Helper. Yes, that's also in the mods list. But it basically looks like this. Let me show you guys. I'll put it here in the screen. So that we won't need to coordinate with ATC for the tug. It's easier to push back. Yeah, so it, you wait for it to get connected, just load it up, wait for it to get connected, and press the tug here, and you'll see the tug going towards you. Outside of the plane, there you go. So that's a good point actually, how do we push back? So we push back straight, and then we turn to our right side so that we're facing this way. It's kind of an overgrown business jet, so it is an airliner, a regional airliner. <sighs> Good. Mean sea level. Mean sea level, yes, exactly. There we go, so the tug is ready. Uh, let me consult our checklist. Something I think went wrong. I hope nothing really. The wheel chocks. Why did that get placed back? Remove that. Let's get out of this. Now, a, a very dangerous... Why is the air conditioning off? Did it just shut down? Oh, yes. That's a very dangerous thing here. And I'm not sure why it happens. But you can accidentally click one of these. And everything resets. I hate that. Absolutely hate that. So now I think we'll have to do everything all over again. Oh, dang it. Yeah, if you accidentally press call in dark, I think they have to add like a, a warning there. So, yes. Dang it. That includes the FMS as well, I believe. So that will just show here how fast I can do these things because everything just darn reset it. Okay. Even the IRS got removed now i can just switch to the other presets but i don't trust it that much to be honest some of the settings are not as i intend them to be a bit farther back than usual i wouldn't be familiar with that with how it should look i do I like the way it looks the very least <clears throat> No. Maybe if I start again, the V speeds will get calculated. That's a good point. Yeah, maybe this time it works. Maybe this time it works. Let me put this here, the side. So that's not in the way. So let's make this fast. Uh, we are aligning in there, right? Yes. Um, what's the IKEA code? Okay, look. Yes. Yes, there you go. Parting 3, 5 right, no SID, and then plugging in the stuff here. <laughs> Flight Sim teaches you a lot of patience, you guys realize? <laughs> it builds some good qualities. Not by choice, but <clears throat> have to persevere. Papa Whiskey Echo. Juliet 64 airway. 
Bravo Delta Foxtrot. Bravo Victor Tango. Let me double check Pilot to ATC that it's seeing the same thing. That's the problem though. When you have all these different applications, you have to synchronize them manually. So it's not that, um, not a straightforward. Okay. And then, yes, after that, execute that. And we go runway 03, RNAV 03, right? Uh, Kokju, I think, is the transition that it's planning for us. So if I look at the legs page here, Bravo Victor Tango, discontinuity. Then we have Kokju, Sheila. Yeah, that's the one pilot ATC is seeing. Good. Okay. So that's a blessing in disguise. That's actually the better flight plan so if we check that in here maybe i should put it in the checklist huh I'll, I'll i'll share it with you later what i mean right now i'm still all over the place trying to catch up with what we lost there you go that's just more straightforward good inertial reference system yes it's a very interesting system it basically you tell you tell it where you are it aligns itself and then from there, it detects each and every movement you do. Did the plane go to the left? Did the plane go to the right? So it records each and every movement of the plane. And so in that way, if it knows where you start and if it keep, can keep track of where you go exactly, then it will know where you are currently. So that's the way it does. Instead of using, instead of relying on the GPS to tell you where you are, it records each and every movement from you and then like deduces where you are based on your movements. It just needs a starting point. So that's what it's aligning right now, I think. <clears throat> At least high level, that's how it works. That's how I understood it. Okay, flight level 370. Good. Go back here. What did... Uh, is it still working? Okay, that's still working. That's interesting. So it's in it the fuel from there. And uh, 59.3 was in it. Okay, that looks good. Copy the perf data. We still don't have takeoff speeds. I don't know why. The sim is just messing with me. I do seven flights offline. Everything's good. And my eighth flight online while streaming, it messes up. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Told you this one. This, this sim teaches patience. 224 at 41 knots. And the deviation is uh, positive too. Okay. Let's turn on the lights there as well. Looks like I'm also getting the FS2020 bug with performance. The FPS just slowed down to a crawl. You can look at the FPS here. Yeah, 17 FPS, 18 bottlenecked without anything. That will fix itself in a while, but that's one of the known bugs that people have been so raging about so much. <clears throat> Let's wait for that to fix itself. So I'll just keep the FPS counter on there for the moment. Why delete? Why delete? 320. The only side effect is because of this lag, even the response of the buttons is a bit lagging. It's a bit harder execute that looks good all right performance you get a 46 flex time oh that's still there okay <laughs> no alex no jack yeah i think they're working on something <clears throat> there you go arm that uh do i need to repeat the cabin pressure thing no, I don't. It's still there. Oh, thank you. Is it? Uh, yes, it's still there. Thank you. At least not everything was lost. Windshield low. Good. Okay. What else am I missing? Let's go through the checklist. EFB. Hydraulics uh, auto on, landing elevation is set, windshield, no smoking, seatbelts, emergency lights, tab trim. That trims, yes, indeed. 
Stab trim, Mac trim. Oh, the FPS is back. And yes, that's the most FPS I'm getting here because of the glass panels. I tested this offline, guys. The, the, the glass panels are bottlenecking me so much that even if I go on triple monitors, I get exactly the same FPS because my GPU is not bottlenecking me. My GPU is not getting maxed out. It's the glass panels that are really unoptimized. I think it has to be improved in uh, in the entire platform, not just in the plane. <clears throat> so let's get rid of that. Now the unfortunate thing is we'll have to wait for IRS to align. That's another like 11 minutes to wait for. So while that's working on, uh, we can already do some things here. I'm scared of the screen now. We can, so everything is closed there. Let's go out of that place. And unless we kick something accidentally and start the APU. Is it starting? Might have closed it. Let's click that again. There we go. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> hey, Jack. Are you bus simming? Oh, don't get you started on the bus. <laughs> Cool stuff. No worries. Okay, let's wait for that thing then. In the meantime, I will load up my charts here. I, I'm guessing it's this tug that uh, broke everything. No, but I'm, I'm seeing many other people get that same problem where suddenly everything shuts down. I think who was that? Someone was streaming as well and then while he was taxiing, everything shut down. Because for some reason, you can accidentally click that. I don't know how, even if your mouse is so far away. Eating sounds good. GPU acceleration, you know the, the GPU scheduling thing? No, I didn't. Because it can be hit or miss depending on what you're playing. It's a bit of an experimental feature for now in my opinion. So not very keen on that. <clears throat> APU is available. Awesome. Good. All right, so let's get rid of the GPU, get rid of the chocks, and let's get out of this area. Yes, thank you. And now we just need to wait for the fuel. Now, because I have pilot to ATC, I can also get some ATIS in here in this airport. Uh, one, two, five. Let me note it City down. City of Colorado Springs Municipal Information Sierra. 2354 Zulu winds are 0, 1, 2 at 2, 0 knots gusting to 20 knots. Ooh. Visibility 9 miles. 3,500 scattered. 1, 0, 000 broken. 2, 2, 000 broken. Temperature 3. Dew point minus Ooh. 3. Current Ooh. altimeter is 2,984. Arriving and four. departing runway 35 left, 35 right. Okay. City of like Colorado that. Springs okay, Municipal good. Information Sierra. 2354 Zulu winds are zero one two at two zero knots gusting to twenty knots. Twenty gust twenty? That sounds weird. <clears throat> okay, we're tuned into clearance delivery now. We'll get our clearance in a bit. Actually we could do that already. Yes, let's Let's see if they will actually hear me out. Uh, what's our call sign again? 179er, right? Clum 7... Do that again. Clumsy 179er, ready to copy IFR clearance. Clumsy 179er is cleared to Kilo Lima Uniform Kilo as filed. Expect departure runway 35 right. Climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Departure on 124.0. Squawk 4464. Let's have that guy read it back. Clumsy 179er is cleared to Kilo Lima Uniform in. Kilo has filed climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Departure on 124.0. Squawk 4464. Clumsy 179er read back correct. Altimeter 2984, contact ground on 
7, when ready for pushback, have a good afternoon. Altimeter 29er 84 ground on 121.7 clumsy 179er. Nice. So we need to ground and make a close in. Show the pilot to ATC. Most of the time I keep pilot to ATC in the background so I can simulate like a real ATC environment. But yes, that's how it looks. So you can do push to talk like what I did. So I hit the push to talk key. So uh, you can see it lighting up. And then I can say Clumsy 179er, say altimeter please. Clumsy 179er altimeter is 2984 at City of Colorado Springs Municipal. So there you go, it gets slugged there. <clears throat> or you can also, if you don't have a mic, like oftentimes when I fly offline, I don't use the mic, you can you say it. So you can pick this question mark and then you can pick the, the kind of um, command or request that you want, like pushback and engine start. So you can say ready for pushback and engine start and then you can say say it and it will say that. Uh, I'll show you later, but first let me plug these in. Uh, we have ready things here now. Your damper. Did I enable the your damper ready? I think I did. No, not yet. Your damper. There you go. Good. Alright. So we're clear. We're good. Let's plug in the altimeter to 984. Three times. One here in the pilot side, one in the standby and the other in the co-pilot side here 2984 and let's get some lights in there okay so now i'm going to plug in the things that we got from our clearance so turn on the flight director we've been told that we will be departing we can expect runway 35 right which has a runway heading of 352 degrees so i'm going to set that here and they mentioned we'll be climbing to 10,000 feet that's already 10,000 feet looks good they said that the departure frequency is 124.0, so plug 124 there. And then we have an ATC, a squawk code of 4464. So plug that there. One watch out though, if you set the ATC from here and not via the RTU here, for some reason external apps don't see it. So you see here, the transponder is still saying 2000. So you have to manually enter that here, otherwise they will complain. So 4464 and the mode, put that in altitude reporting because it doesn't also detect when you put standby or activate it. Okay, let me get back to chat. That was your copilot that reset everything. Yeah, I think the, um, yeah it pays off. You get what you pay for, right? <laughs> hey Calvin, how are you? Lockdown's not a problem. <laughs> to a point, that's true. To a point, that's true okay looking good okay so let's try that so uh, so if i request push back and engine start and then i say say it the co-pilot will say it for me so clumsy okay. 179 are ready for pushback and engine start clumsy 179 push back and engine start approved i also have a mapping a button on my yoke map to the say it so i i don't have to open it i can just minimize and you can press that button Push back and, engine start and he will read back for me. good so putting him to good use there let's turn on the boost pumps the fuel pumps here and uh, now i can show you this one so let's release the parking brake and now i don't need to contact open the atc window i can just say reverse and we'll start moving and if we need to move to the right you can say right and it will steer for us so it's much much easier all right well that's going let's start engine two you can hear the air conditioning come off b key is working with the barrels um sometimes on this plane not the most not the smoothest experience and i learned just to dial them in manually so it's a bit more um, immersive so we can stop that that should be good enough let's engage the parking brake here and then we can let go of the tug and then we can close this app so better pushback no no um, pushback helper 
better pushback is in explain. That's a much better app even. That's a more comprehensive one. But this one is good enough. Okay, so he's leaving us. We're good. Uh, engine 2 has been waiting for us. Let's introduce fuel there. There you go. Ah, oh, dang it. We forgot the beacons. Okay, that's why we have the checklist. So now on air, we'll remove our bonus because we did not have the beacons on. Donuts with chocolate orange filling. Oh, sounds good. Are we having food talk now? <laughs> Conceptualize a plane just say activate necessary options. There's the engine 2 ready. Now there should be an announcement, but even that it seems like it's messed up. So fine. It's clearly not my day today, but we'll work with what we have. <laughs> Please ban yourself. Go back to the normal mode here. Looking good. 20% N2. Introduce fuel. Looking good there. How is on air? Is it still at least. Okay, still detecting us. Yeah, Gilbert Crouch, the guy who turned off the plane. Okay. Looking good there. We can enable track IR. Let me go through the checklist again. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Okay, so both engines are good. Almost. There we go. We heard the chime. <clears throat> so now we can verify that in here. If we go to elect page, you can see that both engines are powered. The generators and that are flowing. You can turn off the APU safely now. Good. So that means we can turn this off in view. And we can turn on our probes. Turn on our probes once more time. There you go. No wheel steering is armed. We are ready to taxi. <laughs> Anti-ice. We will need anti-ice though. Because it's 3 degrees outside. Uh, I think I'll use scowl anti-ice. Not sure if I need wing. I'll enable it later if needed. Looking good there. Alright. So let's request taxi from ground here. No, I haven't tried the helicopter yet. I will soon, hopefully. I'll need to learn it from scratch. I don't know anything about flying helicopters. How much is the bus? Uh, 25 USD, more or less, I think. I have it already. I have some videos in the channel. Probes are for uh, uh, providing heat so they don't ice up. So the instruments will continue working. That's the basic explanation. That's the only explanation I can give. Good. Finally. Okay. So let's put on Navigraph here and see where we're going to taxi. I'm expecting they'll give us either uh, November or Mike and then Hotel. And then Echo all the way down to Echo 7 or Echo 8 rather for runway 35 right. Let's see. Clumsy, <sighs> Clumsy 179 are ready to taxi. Clumsy 179 a taxi to runway 35 right via taxiways Mike, Hotel, Echo, Echo 8. Hold short Hold runway 35 right. Looks good. Let's have our co-pilot read that back. Taxi to runway 35 right via taxiways Mike Hotel Echo Echo 8 hold short runway 35 right clumsy 179er. Good. Right, let's go, go off the parking brake. Taxi lights on. Start taxiing here. One more thing, some more things we forgot. But that's part of uh, the taxi process here. Takeoff trim is 5.5. So let's go here and set that stabilizer trim to 5.5. You can see that number changing right here where my mouse is. 5.5, we align that. Trims are good. Let's check the flight controls are okay as well. Yeah, looking good. Everything's working. Alright, it's taxi. Hey, Craig. <laughs> the co-pilots. <laughs> Such a charmer, right? I know. I know. That's why I picked him. He, he kind of accidentally turns off your engine, though. So, be warned. 
the V speeds are still there, that's good, although that 40 is not the ideal one. So let me adjust that. Let's put that to uh, 162 maybe. Arbitrary nam number. I hope I'm not crashing into anything. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> Don't say it out loud. Other plane communication like AI lights. AI lights. What do you mean? I think I'll get the bus runs from Jack's first swings. <laughs> oh, that's Jack's favorite game. Didn't you know? Let's not forget the flaps here. Flaps 8. We'll see that here in front. Yeah, it's, slats are extending. And flaps as well. Looking good right there. We'll also see that indicating in here. Slats, flaps at 8. You see the corresponding setting in there. Looking good. Let's go through the checklist, make sure I didn't miss anything. Flaps for takeoff, flight controls have been checked, staff trim is for takeoff. Reversers arm, yes, that's one thing I haven't set yet. There you go. And this is the built in speed bumps on the Colorado Springs Airport. If you have a smaller plane, that can actually make the plane bounce. But since we have a very large plane here, when comparing with the normal like Cessna 172, we barely felt it. No donut for, for Patrick. <laughs> 200 gifted subs. Goodness. Nice. Sorry I'm missing some messages guys. But the workload should lighten up later as we climb up higher. Okay, this is hotel. Unfortunately, the taxiways in this sim and this airport are not accurate, so you can't rely on those. They're not one is to one with what the real charts are saying. But at least you get a very nice view of the mountains at the back. That is beautiful. Look at that. This is why I love flying here. Anywhere you look, it's scenic. Very nice. Let's take a photo there. Even if I'm going out of the taxiway, there we go. Solar panels for power. I don't think they'll last very long if they do. <clears throat> At least not yet. Maybe eventually. Yeah, that that bump there, that gap in the landscape. If you're a smaller plane, that will really make your plane fly in a bad way. Wheels going below the ground. Oh, they're good. Oh yeah, that's that one, right? Yeah, it's a good spot. I think it's more of an issue with the air airport itself. My goodness, how scenic that is. Let's take another shot. Loving those reflections and clouds. Oh, and can, can you see? We're actually struggling here. I'm at 50% N1 and we are barely climbing because this is actually uphill guys. This is a slope. <laughs> Welcome to downtown's home. This is where downtown is from, one of our VA managers, one of our patrons. Very active in the community and uh, yeah, he loves flying out of this airport and all the bumps and the hills that includes. maybe eventually there you go finally got some speed up okay anything else we missed double check that um, next up is the takeoff already okay All good 
turn through here. Amicus this one? Yeah, this is Echo. Uh, Good. Now we also need to set that fuel flow to manual. That one. The cross flow, rather. I think that's something to avoid each of the tanks sharing fuel or using each other's fuel, something along those lines. Probably not something you want during takeoff, that's why that's manually enabled. But that's okay. We'll make it work. Okay, and I think we should be ready there. Double check if I missed anything. Everything else is for takeoff. I'll set those manually later. Good. The bus sim will have MP. Yes, that's what they say. But still in phase two, I think. So a couple of months from now. So the winds, if you look, zero one eight at one nine or not. So pretty close to the eighties that we got a while ago should have some proper headwinds in front of us. No, it won't ever. <laughs> the saltiest comment ever. Okay. Let's set our transponder to one here. So we won't forget. It's a very long taxi. Yeah, that's Jack's new favorite game. So you can see here, reversers are on, take takeoff config is okay, anti-ice is on, manual cross flow, seat belts, no smoking. Okay, finally, after more than an hour, we are starting. We are almost airborne. Hey Alex, glad you made it man, how are you? Just hope it doesn't stutter. <clears throat> Bus convoy, yes. Yes. We will surely invite Jack there. See if he will oblige us. Great to hear, man. I'm looking forward to trying out that chopper. That helicopter. Airbus H135, is it? looks very interesting learning about it. Alex has been teaching me a bit about the fundamentals of helicopters and how complex they are, how different they fly compared to planes. We'll be checking that out soon enough, I hope. When I get some time offline, I'll practice it. In Bus Sim 21? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Now, any moment now, we should be handed over to power. We'll wait for the instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has advised that we are now clear for takeoff. Clumsy 179er contact tower on 119.9er. Have a great flight. <laughs> really, we'll fly upside down. Tower on 119.9er, clumsy 179er. All the niners you can think of. Uh, we'll have to plug that in, but I can't multitask, so we'll taxi here first, stop in the whole short line, and then we will get in touch with power. This is where having two people is optimal. Alright, one, one niner, point niner. There's also something I think wrong with the way these frequencies are changed, that recall should be changing whenever you change the active frequency, but minor details. Clumsy 179er, ready for departure, runway 35 right. Clumsy 179er, Windows R012 at 18 knots, altimeter 2987 cleared for takeoff. That changed. Runway 35 right, maintain runway heading until above 7100 feet, then turn right Seven heading 067 to intercept course. 067. 
Cyber Co pilot read that back or so much. For takeoff, runway 35 right, maintain runway heading until above 7,100 feet, then right to 067 clumsy 179er. Two niner eight seven. Two niner eight seven. Two niner eight seven. Good. All right. Finally, let's go. We've been cleared for takeoff, so landing lights can go on. We're entering the runway, so strobes will go on. Hope I didn't miss anything. Let's go through the checklist one second quickly. Um, okay, looking good there. No one on final, runway is clear, winds are properly facing us, looks good, so we go to takeoff mode here, we press that switch to go into the takeoff takeoff mode, you see the flight director change, the PFD indicate that, oh that is beautiful, there we go, alright, pushing forward on the yoke. Throttles moving forward, stable. Toga, detent, and keep it there. Alright. <clears throat> Looking good. 80 knots, a bit wobbly. That's okay. Or fake v, v speeds. Okay, there we go. Rotate. Oh, getting blown off course immediately. Positive rate. Gear up. Awesome. All right, let's continue our climb here. Looking good. At 7,100, we'll, we'll be turning right. Now we can go to speed mode, go to heading mode, as that's 7100. Let's follow the flight directors for now, thank you for the clap. Let's go back to the climb detent, increase the speed to 240 knots. Clumsy 179 hour climb and maintain 17000 feet contact springs departure on 124.0. Enjoy your afternoon. Climb and maintain 17,000 feet departure on 124.0 clumsy 179er. Let's turn on our autopilot there. Let's go to nav mode, 17,000 feet. We'll, we'll peek outside in a bit guys once the workload lessens. Okay, we'll peek outside now. Now Colorado Springs. Yes, beautiful. My goodness. Okay, go to departure 124. That's the one we plugged in here. And now we can report in. <gasps> Flaps up. Flaps up. Almost forgot about it. <laughs> Almost went into overspeed there. Good. Uh, okay, let's report in. Departure. Good afternoon. Clumsy 179er climbing. 17,000. Clumsy 179, good afternoon. Radar contact. Good. Right. I'll get back to you in chat one bit, guys. Let me just catch up. See if I missed anything. I think the critical things are done. Now it's a matter of cleaning up the plane. Taxi lights can go off. Reversers can go off. The fuel, the cross flow can go back to auto. We're also reaching 11,000 feet, so we can uh, turn off the seatbelt signs, we're stable. At 11,000 feet, we can turn off the landing lights. And I think we are good there. I'll go through the checklist in more detail later. But for now, let's enjoy. Okay, climb. Let's see. Reversers are off, fuel flow is auto, taxi lights off, seatbelts off. Landing lights off, speed bug, and since yes, since we have crossed 10,000 feet, we can actually increase our speeds. Now what I try and do is I steadily increase this bit by bit, not in one go, 
because I if you increase it so much in one go the the plane decides to like level out and accelerate before it um, goes up again and pilot to ATC doesn't like that when you stop your climb so we I want to continue climbing so I'm pacing the acceleration so as as we get closer to the target speed you look here in the lower left we start um, seeing we start increasing the speed until we get to 320 knots that's the target and I'm just no monitoring the vertical speed here Clumsy around 1000 should be okay. Enjoy your <clears throat> Center on 128.37 okay, take care Clumsy 179er This is also one more bug I found those frequencies with the 5 in the end, it doesn't work. You need to add the 5 manually. There you go. <clears throat> Center, good afternoon. Clumsy 179er climbing 17,000 feet. Clumsy 179er, good afternoon. Radar contact. Altimeter 2988. 2988. Altimeter 2988, Clumsy 179er. Still not able to go back to chat. Clumsy That's been happening. Climb and maintain flight level 250. Climb and maintain flight level 250. Clumsy 179er. There you go. Looking good. Now, the only thing we are looking at monitoring is the max speed. When we hit Mach 0.77, I have to switch to max speed here. Currently, we're still in indicated airspeed. Otherwise, we will overspeed and stress out the plane. Uh, heading bug aligned. Okay, good. World War One. You have some experience with other helicopters. And yes, I would want to fly that. Maybe we can do that, huh? When, the, when there's a proper chopper now in um, flight sim, we can do group flights with that. Into standard, standard, standard. Beautiful. The nose has to be pushed down while accelerating on takeoff. Yes, until 80 knots is what the the dude was teaching. I think it just um, helps to accelerate because you're putting the. It's like you're you're for, you're helping the wheel settle on the ground so that it can accelerate as much as possible and it's not like lifting off any point. I guess that's the logic behind it. second okay there we go I'm catching up now why did you set the VNAV speed to 0.77 ma oh yes that's a good point uh, let me explain that I'll just get the, get back to chat I'll catch up and then I'll explain that in more detail everyone will have said hello to everyone <laughs> yes coffee was good this is actually just water now or tequila depending on how you look at it <laughs> your life depends on one of the knobs or switches oh yeah true uh, so looks like the plane is having a hard time following the line it's kind of zigzagging all over the place might have to help it out a bit with nav mode So why did I go to Mach 0.77? Normally, it's recommended to use Mach 0.74, but I found that on a full load, like the way we load the plane, because in on air, right, you want to load as much as possible, so you earn as much as possible. So it's almost always fully loaded. Uh, it's uh, let's go to heading mode here. Second, it's really struggling. 
clumsy 179er climb and maintain flight level 330. Is this my equivalent of true racks now? Climb and maintain flight level 330, clumsy 179er. I never get to my explanation. <laughs> So normally they recommend Mach 0.74, but I found that this plane, when you're it's fully loaded, it has a hard time climbing when it goes below Mach 0.74. We're almost Mach 0.7 here, 0.77. So we need to switch to max speed soon, like so. There we go. So you see the change here, Mach 0.77 instead of 320 knots. So as the Mach speed lowers in the indicated airspeed as we climb altitude, we low our indicated airspeed here. So we stay away from the red marking. Because later on you'll see that as we climb, the red barber tapes will reach this part. Like 320 knots will be in the red zone. And we don't want to stay there for sure. But yes, Mach 0.74 I found is struggling with the climb. If something happens, something not smooth happens, like uh, turbulence or something, and you look, you go below Mach 0.74, the plane can continue to slow down and struggle to climb until you actually stall. So I found that using Mach 0.77 not only makes you go faster, it also makes you climb more consistently. So I just keep it at that. It's actually a lot more reliable. Have a good night, Calvin. Thanks for joining us. Or you couldn't reply so much. How much headroom do you leave before overspeed? Wind gusts and wind changes. I think in reality it shouldn't be that abrupt. But yeah, I just stick to Mach 0.77. It should be, it should have more than enough um, allowance in there. <coughs> Serving sandwiches. Yeah, they didn't say that. Huh? Headed east towards Cincinnati. Are we going anywhere near Alex anymore? Maybe not that near. Huh? Ballpark. You have one trails now, by the way. Can okay, you see it? Clumsy 179er contact Denver Center on 132.5. Enjoy your afternoon. Center on 132.5. Clumsy 179er. Clumsy 179er climbing flight level 330. Clumsy 179er, good afternoon. Radar contact. <laughs> Climb and maintain flight level 330. Climb and maintain flight level 330, Clumsy 179er. 3D printed donut, I think you can. Would be interesting to see how it tastes though. So. So when are we flying a helicopter guys? Maybe we can do it this way. If we can convince, if you guys can convince Alex to fly a helicopter in Flight Sim 2020, I'll fly a helicopter in Flight Sim 2020. <laughs> Why is always everything relying on Alex? <laughs> How about you Jack? Are you a fan of flying helicopters also? Have you tried before? I've never tried it. How about you guys? Anyone have any experience with helicopters? I think we can turn off the anti-ice. Don't see any visible moisture. Next fly a heli. <laughs> Double check here. Climb speed. Yeah, Mach 0.77. Yeah, look at this. We're keeping to Mach 0.77, actually Mach 0.78 now. But look at the indicated airspeed. It's at 280 now. Very far. 320 is in the red zone now. 
interesting how that works, huh? Speed of sound and all that stuff. Clumsy 179er climb and maintain flight level 370. Climb and maintain flight level 370, Clumsy 179er. Yeah, that's what I like about Pilot ATC. If you want a full immersion, you can actually use your voice and speak to them as much as possible. But if you're feeling lazy, you want your co-pilot to do the talking, that's more than fine as well. Oftentimes, that's how I do it offline. Flight model progresses nicely. Is it close to how a real helicopter should fly? I saw Jeff Favignano's video on it. It looks very nice. It looks like there's like a basic and advanced setting. Something for beginners and something that's more realistic. So the, the flight model adjusts accordingly. It's promising. Don't know how to fly a heli proper. Just from games, you learned how to go forward, ascend, or descend. Yeah, I think it can be very different in a real, in real flight dynamics. We have some clouds here. Uh, temperatures are negative 57 though. I learned that when the static air temperature is lower than negative 40, even if it looks super cold, it actually doesn't, you're at no risk of icing. At that point, the ice doesn't stick anymore. I don't think it, it I don't know. Ask science. Clumsy one seven niner, you are off course. Turn right heading zero niner niner to return to course. <clears throat> heading zero niner niner, clumsy one seven niner. Oh yeah, because we moved to heading right mode, and now we're a bit too far away. That's fine. We'll get back on track, and then we'll use nav mode to follow the rest of the way. <clears throat> Three flight models, one for Clumsy Xbox One Seven Nine ah, contact that. Denver Center on One Three Three Point Nine or Five. Have a good afternoon. Center on One Three Three Point Nine or Five. Clumsy One Seven Nine. Center. Good afternoon. Clumsy One Seven Nine. Climbing flight level three seven zero. Clumsy One Seven Nine. Good afternoon. Radar contact. So we'll wait for them to tell us to resume navigation and then we'll Clumsy go to nav mode. Niner, contact Denver Center on 132.5, good day. 132.5, good day, Clumsy 179er. Clumsy 179er, frequency is 132.5. 132.5, Clumsy 179er. They also correct you if you read that wrong. Quite nice. Center, good afternoon. Clumsy 179er climbing flight level 370. Clumsy 179er, good afternoon. Radar contact. Clumsy 179er, resume navigation. There we go. Resuming navigation, Clumsy 179er. Use nav mode here to follow on. Let's hope that this time the autopilot can stick. wrong button no rapid movements with the controller ah I see that's nice that's very accommodating of them good thinking yeah I think the team behind that is really putting a lot of effort and thought into it very nice we'll definitely try and fly it hey amplify doing good man doing good some weird happening sometimes our plane shut down a while ago as we were about to push back but now it seems more stable hey Larry. heli flying extremely hard that's what i'm learning now i'm excited to try it out would be very interesting <laughs> ban that guy looks like based on the helicopter that's available right now it lo it's looking good at least from those who have experience with other sims flying a helicopter the flight dynamics they say are quite nice that's what i heard so far so it looks Clumsy like one seven nine or contact denver center on one three two point seven enjoy your afternoon so now because i'm lazy there's actually an option in pilot to ATC where you tell the, the co-pilot do your job 
and take care of comms for me. So we can say co-pilot responds to radio and changes the frequency. So we can center on one three two point seven clumsy one seven it. nine -er. And then from there, you'll see he'll change the frequency automatic. There we go. He switched it. Center now he'll clumsy report one seven nine -er climbing to flight level three seven zero. So on cruise, I usually have it this way, so I can leave my desk in. Climbing very slow right now, last 500 feet. <laughs> Love that very thin layer of clouds there, right at the bottom. Very steep learning curve, but very fun. That's what Alex is saying. Hovering is the hardest thing to do in a helicopter. Why, why do they call it a chopper anyway? Isn't a chopper like a, a motorcycle? Anyone know where that word came from? Speed management landing in the CRJ. Yeah, because everything is manual. Yes. But we'll try. We'll try our best to follow that. Okay, altitude capture. Selected altitude capture, that should go to ALT later on as we reach flight level 370. Chops in the air. Is that for real or is that like a badunts moment? <laughs> no. <laughs> Goodness. There we go, ALT S. And finally, oh I think ALT S is the proper. Uh, indication there okay good so we are now cruising so because we are now level I should pull back on the throttle a bit and this is where the dance comes in the throttle dance I think roughly so we go to manual detent here I recently calibrated my throttles again so now I'm actually in the manual not in any detent during cruise so initially, I was in climb deep and while on cruise, it was weird. Apparently, that was the calibration. Okay, so now I'm monitoring the max speed here. If it's going lower or higher, depending on how my throttles are set up. Looks like it's ticking there. And that should be fine. That should be close enough. Mach 0.77. Should be good. Okay. And I don't think we'll make it in time if we do it this way so I think I'll have to accelerate the time here a bit let's double check so if you look at MFD data or actually I can go to MFD menu turn on the window here and we'll see we'll be arriving at the airport one hour 50 minutes so two hours from now our, our destination is that also what the overlay is saying yeah one hour 48 minutes isn't it yeah exactly nice to see it's accurate now the overlay good but yeah two hours we only have around one hour so we'll have to accelerate things this is why i didn't go into that sim it's, it's very hard to accelerate stuff there okay so increasing the sim rate twice there you go and you see the plane starts wiggling there is actually I learned a key here. You can there is you see this turbulence key button. You can actually enable that so supposedly the plane should be less finicky. It should uh, do less adjustments I think. I'm not sure if it really takes into effect but so far it looks good. So far I think it works. <coughs> All right. Now I can get back to chat. <laughs> what are you guys flying? What are you guys driving anyone tried 140 ATS yet Clumsy one seven nine, a contact DNVR center on one three two point five have a good afternoon center on one three two point five clumsy one seven nine -er. yeah our co-pilot will take care of the comms for us we need to worry about center it. clumsy one seven nine -er descending to flight level three seven zero clumsy one seven nine -er, good evening radar contact Okay, looks good. Helicopter doesn't really fly, just beats the air into submission. 
I, I was curious about it. Like I started watching YouTube videos about it. Things like why would a, a, heli a helicopter need to taxi and take off from the runway? It looks so weird when it could just like hover up, right? Could do like a vertical takeoff, no, no problem. But uh, yeah, I guess it's it's what I learned is it's all about safety. Because like when when the when the helicopter is starting to climb up in the beginning, and that's all well and good. But what if the engine suddenly fails, right? So when the engine fails, then it's going to plop down. It's going to be. I think they have a a, a term for it in that range uh, from zero to 500 feet above ground that's the critical period and if your engine uh, cuts off if your engine dies at that range it can be very dangerous so i think they mitigate that by using the the runways so instead of like um just climbing vertically they kind of like climb at an angle like how airplanes do it so they build up speed first and then they take off so that it's less dangerous I'm not sure how often they actually do that though because oftentimes like in movies right you just see helicopters fly off directly i'm not sure uh, if anyone really does takeoffs on the runway unless for practice or training purposes you learn to auto rotate very fast what's an auto rotate that's something I haven't heard of yet, that term. Hey Richard, how are you? But yeah, these are some very nice concepts that I'm learning. If we get enough time, if we land early enough, maybe we can try it. I have never tried it though. Oh, and, but I don't have the proper controls. I have a yoke instead of a joystick. Yeah, I might do it on a different stream. If you lose power, you lower the pitch of the main base to build rotor speed. I think that's what I heard um, when... So during, contact Minneapolis Center on 119.4. Enjoy your evening. True auto rotate. Center on <laughs> the true Rax is beaten. So what I heard is when, the, when you have an engine failure, Center the first thing you do is to lower the collective, right? I think that's what it does, that, that lowers the pitch of the Radar contact. the uh, the blades. Because the, the higher your collective, uh, it increases the pitch. So it makes the helicopter go up. But it also increases drag, I believe. And if you don't have the engine, then, then the drag just lifts over. So you want to remove that as soon as possible. So I think that what they teach is to keep one hand always on the... It looks like a handbrake, right? On the, on the collective, on the throttle. Ban, ban, ban. <laughs> then you descend and try to flare by pulling pitch at the correct time to land softly. Oh. So it's like you, you, you lower the collective fully and then for the flare you kind of raise the collective at, at some point. So it kind of like bobs up or slows the descent for a bit and just in time to land. Oh, that's very interesting. We'll have to try that out. How are you, JP? Enjoying ATS as I see based on the screenshots you've been sharing in Discord? <laughs> what truck are you using right now? I think last time I, s I saw you, you were using the classic XL from someone. Cincinnati Oh my goodness, it's been so long since I went to Cincinnati I wonder if it's been five years or something You pull collective at the proper time to slow and descend under control Ah, I see Interesting, I think there is that kind of maneuver in a, in a plane as well during I think it's an, a soft field takeoff or a bush plane, a tail dragger I think is they kind of like pull the flaps to jerk the plane into, into going up and then that helps with a very short takeoff, something along those lines so maybe it's a similar concept 
interesting stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. So that video, Alex shared a video with me. Uh, what's his name, Alex? Micah something? I think he's a real commercial pilot and he makes videos while he's flying the helicopter. I saw a video where he teaches the basics on what the different stuffs are. Like instead of rudders, you have anti-torque pedals. You have a throttle to control the RPM. You have a collective which controls the pitch up and down. And you have your, what do you call it, like the joystick stick uh, to control the, the uh, angle, the bank angle or something. And then he makes videos showing as he flies around LA or different parts of the country, Clumsy the US. And you can kind of imagine how it would feel in Flight Sim 2020. You get all this beautiful scenery and you can fly at like 500 feet above ground and just explore the buildings up close. And the visibility is amazing. It's going to be perfect for a sightseeing. There you go. <laughs> Discord server indeed. But you need forward speed to keep your rotor RPM as well. Ah. Interesting. The one that slowed you down. <laughs> it's been known to do that, that's true. There we go, yeah. Bush planes. Stall flap techniques. Stall means short takeoff and landing, is it? Who's this guy? Who's that guy indeed? 34 months. Thanks, Jay. How have you been? I see you've been enjoying Crane Sim. Oh, that looks great. Beautiful. Love those clouds. Hopefully, you won't need to descend there, though. That will be tricky. Contact Kansas City Center on 123.8. Enjoy your evening. Short takeoff. Center on 123.8. Clumsy 179er. Top of descent. Still quite far away. Center Clumsy 179er at flight level 370. Clumsy 179er, good evening. Radar contact. Good man. Talking about uh, helicopters. Going to start learning them soon. Oh no. going to be a disaster in the making and then maybe we can fly near volcanoes not into volcanoes just near them cool yeah that would be nice i saw the helicopter that's available right now in flight sim 2020 it's the the looks they're not the best yet right the interior but i, I saw the notes that it's not really how it would look like so they're still developing a lot of stuff but they wanted to release it as soon as possible to the to the public for free so that people can get their hands on it and uh, get some feedback in you know s development progress stuff it's nice but it's it's really great that we don't need to wait for an official helicopter patch from asobo from microsoft before we do that Oftentimes we find that the, the most ingenious creations in flight sim is made by the community. Kansas City nice. on Have a nice day. Next month to Cali. Will you be on vacation? Nice. Let's go and tweak things a bit here. Center Let's have a look. At flight level 370. So that's the Clumsy stuff. Good Look at that. Radar contact. Cabin pressure. Looks good there. And we can just check each and every part of it. Everything green, I guess, would mean it's good. 3000 PSI everywhere. Those are the hydraulics that we set a while ago. 3A was the one we turned on. And then the other hydraulic systems we turned to auto. AC electrical. DC electrical. And we have fuel. Nice. 
or less balanced left and right wings. Flight controls, anti ice, we're good. Doors are all closed, thankfully. <laughs> Alright, they look good there. Nice. Clumsy 179, contact Minneapolis Center on 125.65. Enjoy your evening. All right, larger. Center Have a good on one. one Don't expect too much. <laughs> Have a good night. Center clumsy one seven nine at flight level three seven zero. But yeah, I've been seeing mods clumsy about the helicopter already. Good evening. Radar there contact. was someone who created helipads and I think like um, made some role playing situations. So the uh, emergency services and then some helipads so you can role play as a rescue helicopter yeah, some some areas in Bavaria they, he added some helicopters near the hospitals very nice okay let's see top of the sentry 20 miles yeah it's pretty far away there no problem one thing I wanted to try Yes, they have this fix as well. You we can put in here the destination airport, for example. Look. Uh, there, there you go. Look. And then we can say, I want a, a distance ring of um, like the approximation of top of descent. So we're at 37,000 feet. And the airport elevation for the airport. Look. Clumsy 179 contact Chicago Center on 118.15 enjoy. Center on 118.15 Clumsy 179er. So let's just plug it in at 37,000. We want to descend when 37,000 and it's 0 divided by 1,000 times 3, 37 times 3, 369. 111 so I guess around 111 miles away so we put that distance cross I think here there it is look at that how close that is so based on the distance ring <coughs> that's an approximation of when the descent should be and that goes perfectly well with the completed top of descent from the plane perfect it's nice that actually works cool. Rescue, life flight, hospital helicopter jobs are the worst. You must lie in the worst weather. Oh goodness. Yeah, and it's literally a life life and death situation, right? So the stakes are high. Goodness. Yeah, the pressure. <clears throat> there are some... Uh, yeah, there are some about that. There are some movies, some series, even some real-life events around those uh, unfortunate events, right? So, uh, and based on what I'm seeing about helicopters right now, I'm pretty scared to ride one because, like, it's a different thing. When I when I first didn't know anything about planes, I was not aware that they had so many redundancies in place. Maybe I just don't know enough about helicopters yet, but they don't seem like the most stable things, right? It seems so finicky, so prone to human error. It's exciting to fly, for sure. But in terms of safety, I don't know, it's like putting your hands fully on the pilot's capabilities. Like, that's true in a plane, any plane too, but I think even more so in a helicopter of all the skill that that takes all the balancing with the anti-torque pedals and the collective and the throttle and all the things that you have to manage it sounds scary sounds exciting sounds scary riding on one have a good one yusuf thanks for joining us but yeah i'll, I'll, I'll uh, study more on how these things go maybe it's a wrong impression Clumsy 179er contact Chicago Center on 135.6. Have a good evening. 
Do Sector helicopters have um, autopilot? A remix. So many CRJ200 out of Cape Cross. Oh, nice. Yeah, we had a nice departure out of Colorado Springs. Very scenic. As long as you don't lose the tail rotor. Tail rotor, that's the the propeller at the back. <clears throat> I guess that makes sense. Well, I guess in a plane that's true anyway. If you lose one of your flight controls, your, uh, your um, what do you call it? Your stabilizers, your ailerons, then it's going to be a very hard day, huh? You understood it, right? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's the more technical term, yes, exactly. What is that responsible for? everything <laughs> keeping the chopper stable i guess clumsy 179 contact chicago center on 124.55 enjoy center on 124.55 hel helicopters have autopilot thanks for following oh that's beautiful goodness looks like the sun center is starting to set Nice. It counteracts the torque of the main rotor. Ah, I see. Ah, yeah, that makes sense, huh? Because if a helicopter is facing this way, so the front is like that, and what direction does the propeller spin? Clockwise or counterclockwise? But yeah, if if the if the because of the propeller, the helicopter tends to yaw to the left then the rotor here which is spinning would uh, spin that way so counteract like this yes maybe something like that mm, makes sense makes sense interesting okay i'm getting more and more into it i think i will have to bring out my hotas i think with the hotas the thrustmaster hotas 4 i can actually mimic those controls Contact Chicago Center. It has the stick. The throttle can Center be the collective, I think. And then the like the the bumper buttons can act as like a decrease or increase throttles. I think that can work. So I should have enough to start with at least. Losing speed here. Ducks can fly. No, they can't. <laughs> no, they don't exactly. <laughs> Depends on the model of the helicopter. It can be either way. Ah, I see. Ra hashtag ground duck. <laughs> that works for me. So wait. So that means depending on the model of the aircraft, your your muscle memory can be different because if it spins the opposite way then your, all your adjustments will also be need to be the opposite right sounds tricky <clears throat> yeah, it's very nice though how uh, the, the physics of things work like because I'm, I'm more familiar with having like a propeller in front of you but if you put that propeller at the top and on the side, at the back, how does that affect the aerodynamics? That's, that's so Clumsy cool, thinking about it. Contact Chicago Center on 120 I'll definitely be reading more on it. Center on 120.12, Clumsy 179er. Okay. Looks like this airport actually doesn't have a tower. So it looks like we'll be handed over to... Center Clumsy 179er at flight level 370. Yeah. It's going to be, we'll be descending and then we'll be 
spotting the airport visually and we'll see most larger oh crap didn't notice the top of descent it's going by so fast okay at 40 miles away i'll slow down to the normal sim rate again so we can prepare stuff and things most larger helicopters have tail rotor compensation ah is there no autopilot so you can just go like on cruise or does it have to be does it have trims at least <clears throat> sounds like a very manual thing could be very tiring for the pilot for longer journeys bell boeing v22 osprey gets into the sim what is that is that a military chopper harrier why does it sound familiar sounds like a military thing Oh my goodness, it's getting dark. Looks like it's going to, going to be a night landing, guys. Yes. Yeah, it's 7.15 in the evening. It's a plane and helicopter. Ah, VTOLs. Center clumsy right. at flight level 370. Do those things exist now? Clumsy goodness. Good Vertical takeoff and landing. Radar contact. Sounds scary, huh? <laughs> Getting dark. Looks like we'll want some better lighting here. Maybe some floodlights. There you go, some lights there. Some lights here too. Looking good. There you go, top of descent around 40 miles. Center clumsy 179 okay. at flight level 370. Slow down the sim rate, clumsy prepare some stuff because this plane is super Radar manual. Contact. This is why I love flying this plane. It's it's an airliner, but it's so manual, it's perfect for simulation. If you want fiddling with things, you'll fiddle with things unendingly with this plane. It's beautiful. Right. Uh, I think I want to lessen the displays a bit yeah not make it that too bright this is getting painful for the eyes something like that a bit easier on the eyes uh, display come off there you go yeah something not too heavy change the brightness of these ones as well good okay let's go through the checklist you know what i'll take you through the checklist with me let's bring that back here so we're now in the descent phase so the landing elevation we put that to the airport elevation and then we set that to minimums assigned altitude vs okay that's pretty straightforward let's go and set this one let's go to night mode as well in our charts <clears throat> airport elevation is 483 okay that's going to be very long winding again so let's set it at 500 flying the osprey in arma is that the one is that the same one goodness Yeah, maybe we'll get that if the physics supports it. Why not, right? But first, helicopters. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Come on, come on. Cabin pressure looks good. 6,700 cabin altitude. Pressure is 8.3. 80 almost there that's one of the biggest advantages when taking off from taking off or landing in Colorado Springs 
such a huge Center discrepancy you have to be fiddling with that all over. Okay, next we set MDA. Uh, MDA Center for our R9 approach. Clumsy 179 or good evening. Radar contact. 1 to 80 feet. We still haven't been told to descend. That should happen anytime soon, I'm assuming. One, two, eighty. There you go, MDA is set. Good. So now we're basically waiting. I'm assuming we'll be asked to descend to 2,500 feet based on the RNAV approach here. So this is the RNAV approach at Sheila at 2,500. So it'll be here. But we also will be coming from Kokju though. So we'll see how that looks if they give us something. So that's what I put in 1280. <coughs> uh, local altimeter setting. Yes. Yeah, looks good. Oh, how do I pronounce your name? Don't call you Mage. Welcome to the stream. Let us know if you have questions with the mods list. Good. Alright, let's consult pilot to ATC what it's going to do with us. If you look here, we actually see top of descent is 6 minutes from now. So it has a quite a different profile than what we're planning, but that's fine. We can make that work. Crap, I actually didn't notice my speeds. We're, we're stalling here. I'm almost stalling here. Yeah, see what's the problem when you start the uh, when you don't monitor the speeds very well, you keep losing speed until you stall. So before that happens, we need to descend, pick up speed, and then climb back up again. Even max throttles wasn't enough. So that's why I don't want to go below 0.74. <clears throat> and yes, this is a plane that you constantly monitor. Clumsy 179er climb and maintain flight level 370. Yeah, they really won't let us off. Climb and maintain flight level 370, clumsy 179er. Preventative maintenance. <laughs> exactly, thank you. We're reaching our top of the center already. Maybe we can request. Clumsy 179er requesting en route descent. Clumsy 179er at pilot discretion. Descent and maintain 2,500 feet. Descent and maintain 2,500 feet. Clumsy 179er. Perfect. Okay, 2,500. Dial that down. Now, if we look at the profiles here, this is what I'm referring to. So I want to have the the direct page here, and we'd need to be so 2,500 at Sheila. So we need to be descending at 2,400 feet per minute to reach that. So that's what we can follow. 2,400. There you go. And I'll pull back on the throttle so we maintain that speed. So it's all very, very manual. Oh man, that looks great outside. Look at that, guys. Beautiful night lighting. That is awesome. Is this Cincinnati? Where are we now? Not quite. This is... Uh Indianapolis. Ah, cool. Well, that's a nice photo. Okay, let me focus again. 2,400. Looking good. Sheila at uh, 2,500. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I actually want to be one second. Let me program it this way. 2500 above, 2100 or none. I want to be at 2500 by Sheila. So I'll plug this in, not above, but exactly at 2500. There you go. Execute. So so then when we when we look here, we'll see 2500 is the plan at Sheila, and that's going to equate to 2600 feet per minute descent. So let's do just that, descend it this way. 2600 pull back on the throttle because we are speeding a bit there 0.74 actually for the descent looking good oops <laughs> what a troll oh my goodness that's lovely yeah. flying VFR at night Looks great, especially in the city. Couple that when the sunset to turn back. Nice. Even flying IFR like this, you still get to see some sights. Okay, so let's check that out again. This is why custom views are super important because you need to monitor so many different things. 2400 descent, let's tweak that a bit. Looking good there. Okay, so now we can. Clumsy 179 are cleared for the RNAV approach to runway 03 right with the Kukju transition. Cleared for the RNAV approach to runway 03 right with the Kukju transition, Clumsy 179 er so I haven't tried an RNAV approach on this plane yet. We'll see how it works. Also, this thing turned on by itself a while ago, which was scary. I guess that's also how it uh, turned off my plane on its own a while ago. Well, we'll need that anyway, so fine, let's keep it there. Let me go through the checklist, see if I missed anything. Uh, descent, speed bug, looking good, we'll maintain that. We can set the landing speeds already. Now we have the V speeds in here. What a troll. Maybe it was my weights a while ago, I don't know. Okay, so we set all the V speeds in here. Looking good. 90 knots, let's pull back on that. We are right on the profile there, based on the snowflake. A bit below, but no, no problem. So we can adjust that, say it's 2,400. Just a tad. Uh, that view is better. Good. Right, so we are 11 minutes away from arriving in Cincinnati Municipal. Uh, 4,000 pounds left by then is the estimate. Looking good. It's around the seatbelt signs. We'll be going through some clouds as well, so I'll need to turn on anti ice in a bit. Yeah, and static air temperature is above negative 40. True air temperature is negative 3, so we definitely will want to prevent some icing. Pull back on the throttle a bit. Yeah, it's like constant like attention seeking plane. It's and it's perfect for sims like this. I didn't know it could be this manual. As an airliner, I thought it would have auto throttles, I thought I thought it would have V nav, all the bells and whistles, but it's pretty manual and it's fun. Turn on our anti-ice on the cowling. Later on, we'll see if we need some wing anti-ice as well. <clears throat> Looking good right there. I hope this airport has some nice uh, um, airport lights. Otherwise, it would be very challenging for us. Okay. Getting a bit low there on the profile. 2,200. Okay, slow it down. It's fine. Constant minor adjustments. <clears throat> In terms of the fuel, what is Sim Reef expecting from us? Let me have a look. So it's saying we arrive in Cincinnati with 
4,800 pounds left based on the estimates or actually less than that we'll see how it ends up later in the end might be actually more accurate same brief might be more accurate than this one you will see that shortly altimeter we have not been given the altimeter here interestingly enough might need to ask for it Clumsy 179er altimeter please Clumsy 179er say altimeter Clumsy 179er altimeter is 2985 at Batesville 2985 Clumsy 179er Clumsy 179er radar contact What? <laughs> good Have a good night Jack Thanks for hanging out Appreciate all the donut eating. <laughs> Catch you soon in a chopper, yes. <laughs> we'll see. It would be fun to do group flights with that. Let's figure things out as we go. Have a good night and catch you soon, man. <clears throat> good. At 14,000 feet, I like to set the speed bug to 240 knots. 250 ideally but because on air is very restrictive with that so i set it 240 just so i have some buffer because the plane does tend to go above the speed sometimes so at 14,000 feet i'll set it at 240 knots just so we'll have a bit of buffer to, to slow down so by the time we hit 10,000 feet we're way below the speed limit of 250 knots rest easy old fella <laughs> Okay, some clouds up ahead. Not much though. It's good. That might be the airport, I think. Let's see, based on the map. Where are we now? Cincinnati should be 11 o'clock. That might be it. Yeah, that might be it. That lit up area right there. Cool. Let the tagging begin. The troll is here. <laughs> 2,500, 2,100. Uh huh. 2,000. Speeding. Too much. So let's start slowing down. We actually go to flight idle here. And. Speed bug down 240 knots. We might need speed brakes here. So I don't think I will reach 240 knots by then. I didn't monitor it correctly. Well, we can shallow out the descent a bit. I think, I think in the Zebo in the 737, when it gets near. 10,000, I think at around 12 or 11,000, it actually slows down the, the descent. So it kind of steepens the descent and then shallows it down near 10,000, so the plane automatically slows down. So it doesn't have to, you don't have to engage speed brakes or anything for it. <laughs> okay, let's zoom in on that a bit. There you go. Landing lights can go on. Turn, also turn on our logo lights so that we can see our logo from here. Too bad we don't have a clumsy livery just yet. There we go, 240 knots, that's beautiful. Good, we can continue our descent. How much do we need to Sheila? 1300, no problem. We can make that work. Two forty knots is okay. Okay, good. 240 knots. We made it there. Uh, up next, uh, not that one. Sorry for the sudden bright light. Let me see. Approach. Seat belts are on. Speed bug. Yeah, these speeds I set already. We can start descending to or slowing down to 210 knots, I think, because we are getting pretty close here. 
Yeah, let's start that. Let's be on the safe side. 210. That's, I think, is the minimum clean speed. Minimum, minimum speed without flaps, without landing gear. Love that reflection right there. Is that the airport? I hope not. No, I don't think so. Top bar looks so much better now. Great to hear. Thank you. Now, where could the runway be? It might be that one, but a different runway. Um, one second. Could be. 6,100 feet in length. So we definitely have to be a bit more mindful. Because it's not as long as the usual runways we land in. Good. Shallow out that descent. Keep two ten knots in there. Looking good. One and a two thousand one hundred. Okay, one and a two thousand one hundred. That's the final approach fix. What is that? Minimized. Yep. Okay, so what do we do here? Um, I guess they will tell us to cancel IFR later and switch to local frequency. That's okay because there is no tower here. Um, I want my checklist. Looking good, we're getting pretty close in here. Yes. And then 210 knots there. Vertical profile is looking good. Right there, almost right at the middle. I can go with that. So now we'll just follow the nav mode the rest of the way. We don't need to switch to localizer or anything because this is an RNAV approach. But I think, I haven't actually tried it, I think we'll still need to enable approach mode as we get near. Maybe. We'll see. So 2100. And then I hope we capture the glide path before then. So that it will descend us below that 2100. We will see how it works out. <clears throat> so do we have visual on the runway? The airport? That's it, right? That must be it. <laughs> I don't think there's anything left there. Clumsy 179er runway inside. MC 179er, runway inside. Fairly small field for commercial. <laughs> yes, barely, barely fits. 6,000 feet. I just found a job that is very high paying. Maybe there's a reason for that, huh? And uh, yeah, I think that's where we're going. Clumsy 179er, cancel IFR. It's not responding to me anymore. Clumsy 179er, cancelling IFR. Clumsy 179er, request cancel IFR. <laughs> Doesn't work. Uh, cancel IFR. Clumsy 179er, cancel IFR. I think the controller slept already. Clumsy 179er, roger. Go. Radar service terminated. Frequency change approved. Have a good evening. Clumsy 179er Roger. Radar service terminated. Oh, there you go. Just Frequency a late reply. Frequency change approved. Good day. Clumsy 179er Roger. Radar service terminated. <laughs> Switch that. There's a bit of delay. Vatsim. Yes, I think offline will be better. I mentioned that in the beginning of the stream. I was planning to do Vatsim. But of course, I came up with a lot of excuses. <laughs> so <clears throat> we'll see if offline I can try that better. 
Looking good there. Okay. Let's set our V speeds to 170. Start slowing things down. Give me first notch of flaps. <clears throat> Start slowing down. Pull back on the throttle just a bit. 230 knots would be the latest speed, I think. The, the highest speed that we can have for extending flaps. First three notches. There we go. Going flaps 8, this should increase the drag tremendously, so we should be slowing down hugely with that. Nice. And flaps 20. And then we'll try and stay at 170 knots here. Nice. That's a nice, nice uh, impact. Nice uh, twist. They actually know that it's night and uh, have the appropriate response for it. Cool. Do we have? Hmm. We have tailwind. It's not the best landing, especially with a short runway like this. Hopefully that weather changes. Okay, we're at two thousand one hundred. No, oh, that's 2,500. Two thousand one hundred later after we cross Sheila. That's fine. And then the heading bug is all out of whack. Heading should be zero two five. There you go. Good. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't stream it on Discord because you won't be able to hear the VATSIM because it's an external application. It's a bit... Yeah, I hope VATSIM can get it new features eventually. <coughs> Good. There we go. Alright, start descending. Good, right there. Let's arm the approach. Let's hope that works. If it doesn't, we'll fly it manually. Set the VRF speed, 136 knots. And we'll slow it down from here. Where's the runway? That one? Oh yeah, apparently the one I saw... That might have been the international airport. Crap. Okay, might be a bit trickier here. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if there's a glide path that this guy will capture. We'll see if it doesn't descend below 2100 once we pass that waypoint. That waypoint which is uh, Wonan. Then we'll do it this on our own. Okay, landing gear down. Flaps going down. Okay, full flaps. Doesn't look like it's happening. I'm giving the autopilot the benefit of the doubt before I take over. Maybe you shouldn't arm the approach because it's not, yeah. I don't think it will. Okay, fine. Okay. Let's do this on our own then. Uh, I forgot some things. The reverser, we should arm that definitely. What else am I missing, guys? <sighs> Taxi lights. PRF, tax 
taxi lights, autopilot, gear, yeah. Gears are down, flaps are full. Okay, we are in a nice, well, landing configuration here. Turn off the flight director, that's not going to work for us. And we are all in a very bad approach angle here. Pretty high. We'll make it work. A bit bumpy. We have some severe tailwinds at the back there. I think this is the wrong one. We actually we have to go around. But I'm a bit stubborn. We'll force it. Minimums. Yes, we'll land. There we go. Man, that's dark, huh? No guidance, no glide path whatsoever. To be tricky. Four hundred. Super dark as well. Three hundred. Three hundred. And now I'm getting the FPS problem from flight sim. I think. Teach that Two hundred. Hang tight, guys. Going to be rough. Same 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Come on, land it. There we go. Get the reversers in. Ooh. Break, break, break. Those lights are saying that the runway is actually ending soon. Oh, we should have more than enough space, no problem. There we go. No problem there. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete nice. stop. Made it in one piece? Somehow. No taxi lights. There we go. Bit dark in here, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Where the heck is the... The thing. Okay, here I think. Go straight. Amorph! Sure thing, man. More than welcome to join. Create uh, an account in the Thunder World. And we'll see you there. Join us. Charlie Lima Uniform Mike Sierra. Basically, clumsy without the Y is the VA code. And then join us in Discord. Exclamation point Discord. That's where we coordinate the different stuff. Landing lights can go off, strobes can go off. Um, we have all the other things that can go off, but for now, let's take things one step at a time. My goodness, it is dark here. Not the best for night landing, huh? <clears throat> Alright, what do we need? We can actually turn on the APU. We can uh, turn off the probes. APU is starting, that's good. Flight director, yes, that's off already. Reversers, we can turn that off. They did their job already. Flaps going up, flaps are already up. Everything looks good. Uh, landing lights are off and strobes are off as well, I think. Yes, okay, good. I'll get back to chat. First, I will rely on Navigraph because I, I don't see anything in front of me. My goodness, this is dark. That's a taxiway apparently, supposedly. Yeah, that's the one. The gates are... Actually, these might be... General aviation ramps. I think Alex, what Alex said is true. This might not have been for an airliner. wonder how we're going to get, to get off here. <laughs> hey, Luna. <laughs> Long time, man. Yeah. Parking simulator, that's true. Super dark. How have you been? Oh yes, exactly, Bunky, thank you. So once you join Discord, there's a new pilot guide in there. So we can turn left here, or turn right here rather. APU is available. Yes, good. So we can just park literally anywhere, supposedly. Don't think anyone would complain. I don't think there's anyone here. Doesn't even seem like the airport is operational. Thank you. 
Okay, we're good. So that's the end of the other runway, apparently. But I'll just turn here to the right. And there should be an open area there, I hope. Oh, we have some dome lights in there at least. Some better lighting at least inside. Okay, I don't think this is a taxiway. I think that's the border of the... <laughs> Toxic encounter. Ah, goodness. Yeah, more than welcome here, man. Yeah, we all need that sometimes. Sometimes you just encounter these very toxic people. You need to detox your way out of it. Okay, I'm happy enough with this. Don't complain. <laughs> Parking brake is set. Let's turn off the taxi light. Seat belts can go off. Looking good there. Uh, anti ice can actually go off as well. I apparently had that on still all the way. How's our fuel? Fuel is 47. Look at that. Wow. Look at that accuracy from Simbrief. It's going to get white, okay? It's going to get bright. So it's planning. By the time we arrive in Cincinnati, we'll be at 4,800 pounds. And now we are at 4,700. I would say that's pretty close. My goodness. Lovely. Okay. So turn off the nav lights. We can start shut down the engine now and get our prize. Too bad I forgot the beacons on a while ago, otherwise it would have been a relatively perfect flight from on-air point of view. So if you look at on-air, there it is. Safety bonus not obtained, just because I forgot the beacon. Yeah, this one. Minus 0.03, that's minimal though, that's okay. We did have all the other bonuses in the night landing bonus as well. Good. That was actually a pretty good job. 300k, I think. In terms of gross income. Gross revenue. <coughs> Magic the Gathering. Oh yeah. You're very fond of that, right? I used to play that back in the day. Um, the actual cards though. I think I only arrived until or made it until what? Fifth edition or something. <laughs> Super old school. Uh, okay, we're good. So now we can shut down the plane and uh, off we go. So let's uh, turn off the nose wheel steering. Let's see what else I'm missing. We can turn off the beacons because the engines are off now. The APU is powering the plane. We can now place the chocks and we can let go of the release the parking brake and from there we can just turn off everything go back the opposite way basically <clears throat> windshield heat air conditioning uh, boost pump APU and turn off the plane. There we go. Goodness. Did we reach 200 hours? We did, guys. 200 hours flight time total, finally. Official, the official one at least. We are much higher than that, but I'll take it. Congrats to everybody for surviving. <laughs> when we take on helicopters, I cannot say the same thing, but I'll try to practice offline and we'll see how it goes. Cool stuff, guys stuff we made it and we made money for the company the VA so that's always great Bunky will be happy <laughs> GG everyone I think we'll end the stream a bit earlier because 15 minutes is a bit of a middle of nowhere I can't start something <clears throat> so yes we'll end it there thanks for watching thanks for hanging out looking forward to what flight sim will bring us in the future yeah I'll catch you on Friday. We'll see what we do, but most probably it will be ATS. Checking out 140 official. Thanks guys. Appreciate the company as always. Have a good day. Have a good night. Catch you soon. Bye-bye. Close flying.